Hi, I'm Carla Bruni with the Chicago Bungalow Association, and in this episode of our How To Home series, we'll be learning when it's time to repoint your walls, what materials you're gonna to wanna to use, and how to chisel out your joints properly. We're here again with Matt Wolf from Henry Frerich Sons. Matt, first, can you just clarify the difference between repointing and tuck pointing? Yeah, we often refer to what these contractors are doing as tuck pointing. That's actually the wrong term. What these contractors are doing is removing the existing mortar, and they're gonna be replacing with new mortar. That process is called repointing. Tuck pointing actually refers to a specific style of repointing. We always say that wrong, don't we? We do. Okay. <laughs> well, why don't we go and meet these contractors who will be giving us a hand today? Great. All right. So, Carla, this is Matt and Martin with Guernica Restoration. Matt, good to see you again. Nice to see you again, Matt. Thank you so much for being here, Matt. Thank you for having us, Carla. I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about your process for removing the mortar. Absolutely. We are removing uh, mortar from this face break of beautiful historic Chicago bungalow using our grinders where we do relief cut and by hand chiseling. And you do a relief cut because of compression? Yes, because after years the mortar is very compressed and hard. So cutting the mortar in the middle with the grinder help us with the hand chiseling. This way we are sure that the hand chiseling is safe for a face break. Could you take us to the back of the building so we can see a wall that hasn't had the mortar removed yet? Absolutely. Okay, well while Matt is going to get his tools and set up, let's talk about the condition of the wall we're gonna be working on. I noticed there are at least three different mortars we're looking at. Can you talk about what those are and what the consequences of using improper mortars? Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of moisture related damage to this wall. Uh, efflorescence, this white powdery stuff, coupled with moisture intrusion has caused these brick to spall, the mortar to spall, and as a result, there's been a f at least two, maybe three prior attempts at repointing this wall to fix some of the damage. And you can see that by the different colors of mortar. You've got a kind of a brownish red mortar here, this uh, dark gray mortar here, and then of course the original mortar, which you can see in here. And their hearts were in the right place. They knew that they had to address this wall, but they didn't do it properly. So instead, what they did is they just simply applied new mortar over the existing. Uh, that's bad for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're putting good mortar over bad mortar. So there's a bond issue there. Plus they didn't grind or remove any of the original mortar out. They just simply smeared it on the surface. And what is the reason for it having to grind out original mortar? Yeah, so just smearing it on the surface, there's no contact area between the brick above and below. It's just bonded to the original mortar. When we remove the existing mortar, we're creating more surface area, more contact between the new mortar and the brick above and the brick below. And the general rule of thumb when grinding a brick wall out or hand chiseling a brick wall out to prepare it for repointing, uh, you want to remove the mortar to a depth that is roughly two times the width of the mortar joint. The minimum depth is three quarters of an inch. Can you just walk us through how Matt's going to come back and grind out these joints? Yeah, so he's going to use an electric angle grinder with a real thin eight inch thick diamond blade and he's going to cut what we call a relief cut right down the center of the bed joints, which are the horizontal joints, and the head joints, which are the vertical joints. And think about it, all these mortar joints are being sandwiched and compressed together by the brick. So there's a lot of pressure that these joints are resisting against. But if we draw, uh, cut a relief joint in the middle of the joints, it relieves that pressure so that when we come back and hand chisel the mortar fins above and below, the mortar removes easily without chipping out the brick. And I know there are hand chisels and there's also air chisels, correct? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the difference between those? Yeah, well, essentially they're the same. The best method for removing mortar joints is by hand. You have more control over it. When you're getting into power tools like electric grinders, it's very easy to accidentally cut into a brick or nick a brick when you're grinding it. You have more control with hand chisel. Of course, hand chiseling mortar takes a long time. It's very laborious. It's gonna cost a lot of money. So kind of the next step up is doing hand chiseling but using a pneumatic uh, air chisel. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to remove all of this mortar, let's talk about what our options are for repointing. Okay. Stick around for the next episode in our Repointing Your Vintage Masonry series where we'll talk about how to choose the best mortar for that older brick. 